<laughs> hey beauties, hey Facebook, hey friends. Quarantine yoga, take two. Um, it'll take a while for people to start trickling in. Um, some are planning on it, some will do it later. Um, this is Wednesday, April 1st. April Fool's Day to you all. Too bad this isn't a joke. <laughs> Quarantine. So I need yoga again as much as you all, I keep saying, and specifically focusing on the feet, legs, um, and even tailbone area. I'm going to do a special root chakra class starting Monday the 6th. Um, but we need that every day now during this time um, that feels unstable. If we can really ground ourselves with um, feet, footwork, leg work, um, even walking on the ground barefoot um, and really becoming aware of our feet, giving ourselves foot massage or rolling the foot on a ball, all of that's going to be really helpful right now for courage. Um, the first chakra is all about courage, stability, security, and self-preservation. And if we can stay grounded and doing all of our nice foot and leg work and feel grounded and stable, then the gifts are calmness, patience, and the willingness to slow down, which all of us are being forced to do right now. Um, depending on your job, of course. So as I said last week, or Monday, that is, trust the weight, embrace the uncertainty, enjoy the beauty of becoming. When nothing is certain, anything is possible. And we're focusing on being peaceful, protected, and secure. So come on down to the floor with me, and we will begin. And those of you coming in, just check it out and join in. And we're going to start laying down. I think you can see me. Yes. And stretching right leg up to the sky. Point and flex that foot strongly down and strongly point. Just do that a few times. What's funny is ever since I started teaching online, I've become dyslexic. So if I say right, and it's obvious that I mean left, you'll, you'll figure it out. When I'm doing the Zoom platform next week, starting Monday, you will actually have the ability to chat or unmute yourself and say, hey, do you mean the other side? So I'll try my best not to be dyslexic today. And then just bring that leg in, toes drawing towards your face, just a gentle opening, starting to open back of the leg. <sighs> Don't forget the breath, breathing out all those spinning thoughts and worries. And then let's do that on the left. Point that foot up to the sky, toes down and up. Flex and point, just opening the foot and a deep breath again. <sighs> nice sigh, can always help to breathe out those worries as well as tension. Keep the toes down, bring that leg in to your sweet spot, gently opening the back of the leg. Good, and then switch. So we're gonna actually bring right knee into the chest and lengthen out the left leg, out and down into the floor. Pulling those legs in opposition. And then bring that straight leg up to a hover and just reach for it using the abdominal. 
and then actively switch and then you can rest it down. Now left knee is hugged in and reaching out through the right leg. Press that right leg down into the floor. Pull the left knee in tighter, a deep breath or two. Relax your jaw. And then lift that straight leg up to a hover. Reach using the abdominals. Good. And then hug both knees in. Circling the knees over the hips a few times. Another way. Good. And then we're going to just have feet on the floor and lift one leg up. So let's do right knee over the hip. We're going to take that opposite hand and push it into the thigh and the thigh is going to push into your hand both. So you'll feel the arm and the leg working, but you'll also feel the pec, the abs and the deeper hip. Push, 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 push. And then switch it. Now that left knee is over the left hip and you're pressing right arm across, push into the leg, leg pushes into the arm, hold it strongly, push, 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 <sighs> and rest. Now we're going to squeeze through the pelvic floor like you're holding in the P and draw the lower back into the floor. Now as you reach the arms up, Cross the arms, keep that pelvic floor squeezing, lift the legs up, and now we're gonna lift the head and push. Hands into opposite thighs, thighs into hands. Now you feel the abdominals working more. <sighs> and rest. Nice deep breath. <sighs> Side out. Good. And then we're going to shake out the hands, push that right palm up to the sky and just use your other hand to give it a little pull. Opening the inner rest, you can do a little movement side to side to your sweet spot. And then try that other hand. Pull the fingers down to your sweet spot. No need to overdo it. Good. And now I want you to feel your feet on the floor and start to push your feet on the floor. You're just hip distance. And you're going to take the elbows down, bent elbows down to the floor by your waist. And as you press the elbows into the floor, we call this robot arms, squeeze the shoulder blades together and lift the chest. And then you can keep pressing down as you lift the hips up into your little bridge version of Setu Bandhasana, bridge pose. Opening the front thighs and hips. You can walk the elbows in closer, press them down into the floor, hips up. Deep breath. Good. Rest when you're ready and just take some deep breaths resting on the floor. I think you all can see me. I'm going to put on my guitar music here. Good. And a few more things on the floor. If you're just joining me now, we're focusing on some feet and leg work. And we'll do a overall workout for the body throughout the next 45 minutes. <sighs> Back to bent knees, feet on the floor. Arms are going to come up. So. 
we're going to go through a little series for the shoulders and pecs and upper back. So if you reach the arms up so that the shoulders come off the floor, you're using these muscles along the upper ribs. And then push the palms together so you feel the pecs working too. And then release. So the arms still are straight, but you're just letting the shoulders come back to the floor. And then elbows are gonna go out to the side and press down into the floor. So you feel the upper back working. And then we're gonna go through that whole series a few times, reaching up to the sky, push the palms together, using the chest, release, shoulders pushed into the floor, and then elbows down and push into the floor. Let's do that two more times. Reaching up, shoulders lift, push palms together, straight strong arms, release, shoulders down, pushing into the floor, and elbows push down. One more, one more. Reach it up, push together, push, 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 release, shoulders down into the floor. You can even lift the chest a little and elbows down. Good. Rest. Bring the right arm up and over, cross the chest and pull it over, opening through that shoulder and tricep. You could try different angles. enjoying this time to be in your body and breathe let everything else go other arm left arm across and down pull it down and over <sighs> softening what angle feels best And then we're gonna bring the feet off the floor into that just kind of classic lower back stretch. And then I want you to play with the hip joints. So the hip joint can go in a circle. It's a ball and socket joint. We can't go down into the floor, of course, laying here, but we could go any which way with knees bent or straight. So just some playful movement here. Just roll, roll around the floor at your leisure. Anything goes, sometimes that can be the most healing thing to follow your intuition with some playful body movement. No right or wrong, just what feels good. Breathe. <sighs> Legs can go the same direction, opposite direction. Just whatever feels good. Hip joints playfully moving. Hips are at the center of the body. So the legs move, the torso might move. Everything is connected through our fascia. Deep breath. Excellent. And then we're gonna meet back at Knees bent at center. And I want you to take your hands behind your head. And what we're going to do is stretch the legs up as you rest the head. And inhale. And exhaling, we're going to come into a crunch, elbows and knees together, like so. Inhaling, head down, stretch out the legs. Exhale, crunch. Just do a few of those. Last one. <sighs> Good. Rest for a moment. And then we're going to do one more. 
of the crossed arms. Squeeze the pelvic floor tight, lower back down. Belly engages, muscles towards the spine. And then you're gonna reach for the legs and lift the feet off the floor and push. Hands into the thighs, thighs into the hands. Push, 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 push. Good, and rest. Good. <sighs> nice breath. Now, back to our robot arms. Elbows down next to the waist. Feel the feet on the floor. Feet hip distance and press the elbows down as you lift the hips up. Walk the elbows in closer. Press the elbows into the floor, lifting the chest. Draw the knees towards each other. Deep breath. If you want, you can stretch out the arms or grab the hands together, clasping the hands together underneath if you want a little bit more shoulder opening. Or you can stay a robot. <sighs> Slowly release, resting the arms out to the side. Do a little windshield wiper with the legs here. And maybe even with the face, looking to one side and then the other. <clears throat> Very good. Now we're going to roll over and come on up. And then we're going to be sitting now. You don't need any props yet. At some point you might want a blanket to cushion under the knees. So go ahead and take your feet wider than hip distance apart. And we'll continue with some of the hip opening here. Hands can be behind you for support. And you're just doing the knees side to side like so. One sitting bone does come up. And so the mantra for the root chakra that helps us feel stable secure and safe with lots of courage is I am peaceful, protected, and secure. And that quote that I've been saying is perfect for that. Trust the weight, embrace the uncertainty, enjoy the beauty of becoming. When nothing is certain, anything is possible. And we're trying to keep the hope and positivity in ourselves and in the air. Now, when the knees are over to the right, stop there and kind of stack your legs a little bit. So you're on the right hip. We're just gonna add a little twist. So draw the belly in and over as you walk your hands over and behind you. Hands on the floor for traction to help you go into that twist. Belly also helps. Belly continues revolving into the spine and over to the right. And then the left arm could reach back there to help as well or across the chest. <sighs> Deep breath. Okay. Now, as you unwind, keep the knees to your right and drop the shins to the floor. This is sometimes called a Z-sit. So this right foot's next to the left thigh. And we're just gonna do a gentle hip opener coming over the right leg. Let the head hang once you find a good angle. Just beginning to go into that right hip and buttocks for a stretch. Deep breath. While you're here, you could also do a little foot massage on that right foot. I mentioned at the beginning that foot massage or rolling your foot on a ball can also help the root chakra and help you feel more stable and safe and secure.
when we're not quarantined, I could give you a foot massage. <laughs> it's looking like that's gonna be May now. Um, so I'll, look, I'll be very busy in May. Good, one more time, come over that right leg at whatever angle feels good. <sighs> and breathe. Good. Now we're going to bring the knees up and over. So you're now going to come onto the left hip. Stack the legs first and we'll do that twist. So you're revolving the belly. Belly draws into the spine and over to the left. Walk your hands over. Just ease into it a little bit more with each out breath. Softening. Right arm can reach back there, and as you breathe, grow tall on the inhalation. Soften on the exhalation. Good. And then as you release, you can come to that Z-sit. So now it's that left foot next to the right thigh, go ahead and do a little of that foot massage first. Squeeze thumbs, knuckles, whatever feels good. General squeeze. Hello feet. That help us stay grounded, peaceful, protected, and secure. Good. And then as you come over that left leg, where does it feel like the best stretch for the hip joint and the buttocks? And rest down. <sighs> if you really can let the head go completely with every exhalation a little more, you'll feel it all the way down into the hip. And then just sit for a moment and do that tapping on the breastbone. It stimulates the thymus gland. And that can help the immune system is the purpose. It might also feel invigorating and encourage deep breaths. Awesome, shake it out. Now, we're gonna do all fours briefly, then up to standing. Now, this one is going to be um, from hands and knees. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take one foot, curl it under next to the other foot, and then sit back. So it's opening the Achilles tendon and the deeper calf muscle, the soleus. You can, the heel doesn't have to go down. You could do this at whatever place it feels best. If it hurts to bend the knee completely, then you won't. You can modify for yourself always. Good. Or you could sit all the way up, just however that best, however that feels best for you. And then try the other leg. So you're curling the toes under next to the other one. And then sitting back to your sweet spot, heel comes down. <clears throat> and this will be, you know, saved and could, you can watch it later. I will also put these on my YouTube channel now. So with this one later, I'll have like six videos on there. Some of them are short. Welcome to do those anytime. 
Um, but next week, Monday, I'll be working again with High Desert Yoga on their Zoom platform. Um, and the classes are not that expensive, so you can go to highdesertyoga.com and click on online offerings. Monday the 6th, they'll be doing the root chakra, which is the tailbone area all the way down through the legs and feet. More good stuff like this. Good. So then you can just take your hands and knees and curl the toes under. We're going to draw belly to the spine and round the back a little bit. And you're going to strengthen the arms and just hover the knees. So you can drop the head even. It's all arms, abdominals, and some leg muscles. Hold, and then release to your dropped belly, cow. Heart forward, shoulders back. And one more time, rounding, knee hover, head drops. And release. Lift the sitting bones up. Keep the toes curled under and push on up to your downward dog. And playfully move through the feet, up and down. Walk the feet up to the hands. You can bend the knees as needed. <sighs> And gently roll up or however you want to come up to standing. <sighs> awesome. And this is on my phone. So again, the Zoom will be on my laptop and I think we'll have a better view of Matt and everything. So go ahead and stand <clears throat> for now. Feet hip distance. Lift the toes up. Sink into your heels for a moment. Draw belly up and in from the lower belly. And the upper belly can draw down and in. With the toes up, just balancing. And then try releasing and spreading out the toes and push into the balls of the feet as you lift the heels and try balancing. You can press into the base of the big toes and that does help. Good. This time as you lift the toes and heels come down, we're going to come down to our little like skiing position. And just feeling the quads start to work. Toes are still light, not gripping. They could even wiggle if you want to. And then bring those palms together and just sit for a moment here. You can still lift the lower belly up and draw tailbone towards the earth, keeping the chest up. And then we're just going to swing the arms forward and back. You can do a little bounce if you want through the legs. Good, and then sweeping the arms up, straighten up completely, reach, feet pressing down, hands reaching up. Exhale, back down. Good. So now we're going to take the feet wider and do that bending like you're on a boat or a surfboard or a paddleboard. Soft knees. And we're going to do this arm movement where we do a push to the side, back in, and then palm forward and back in. So every time you're going to that side, you can also engage the abdominals and bring the ribs over with that. But just try alternating between the push and the palm forward. And it opens up the whole arm so the nerve pathways and the blood vessels can flow. Push and then palm forward. 
push and then palm forward. Alternating. One more of each. Good. And then try the other arm. Push and then palm forward. Push and palm forward. One more of each. Awesome. And then rolling the shoulders up, back, and down. One more time. Good. Now take the feet again. Same thing, wider than hip distance, bend the knees. What we're going to do is place those palms behind the hips. So you're drawing the shoulders back, lifting the chest, and I want you to push the hips forward. Knees are soft, push the hips forward. And then what we're gonna do is take a look at one heel, either one. As you take a look at that heel, you could draw the torso towards it, and it stretches out that whole front body, maybe even the neck, just to your sweet spot. And then you can grow tall, shake it out. And then again, palms behind the hips, chest up, shoulders back and down. Press the hips forward. And now look at the other heel. Maybe you can come closer to it, maybe not. Good. And release. Shake out the shoulders, the arms. If you ever have upper body tension, just do this floppy arm twist, let the hands rest. Good. Good. And then, come on up. If you have a yoga mat, you're going to come up to the front. And root those legs down. Can you squeeze the front thighs and lift the kneecaps? Lower bellies lifting up and in, upper bellies drawing down and in. Deep breath and then soften the shoulders. As you rest here, arms can be at this low diagonal or resting at your sides. Soften the shoulders down and just alternate, looking to one side, maybe even a little bit behind you, and then try the other way. Now, this time as you do each side once more, give a little tiny push on the temple and release. Other way, tiny push. It, one side might like that more than the other. Don't overdo the push. And then back at your center. You're going to bring those palms together. Equal weight into both feet here. Tadasana, like a palm tree, root, rooting both legs down like tree trunk. One big tree trunk. And then we're going to inhale up and reach up and grow tall. Now stay here and have a seat. Back to that skiing leg position, Utkatasana, powerful mighty pose. Inhaling up, straighten, and then dive it down. So you come into the forward bend, you might need to bend the knees still. Shake out the head. Good. Take the right foot back and just take that low lunge, taking more height if you need it for your hips. Outer right hip draws back and down.
step back to a plank, a push-up position. What we're going to do is drop right elbow, then left elbow, forearm plank, hold, and then release. This is called Sphinx. Elbows and shoulders should be under the ears, pushing down. Now, instead of letting the belly hang into the floor, actively draw belly muscles up to the spine, tailbone towards the heels. And then we're going to reach back with the limbs lifting and lengthening back. Shoulder blades squeeze together. Deep breath, locust. Good, and then resting the hands. You can stack the hands under the forehead to rest. <sighs> now gently bring the hands next to the ribs, cobra. And as you hear in this low cobra, can you lengthen your head like a turtle might? Crown of the head reaching forward, shoulders drawing back. Then you can curl the toes under and come to downward dog. Bending the knees, lift the sitting bones up and back. Straightening the spine more important than straightening the legs. <sighs> and then next inhalation, step that right foot up to the front. And it's our other side lunge, outer right hip, back and down. And then we're just stepping back to the front. This is a super easy sun salutation version. Extend. Release. We're going to bend the knees and sweep to Utkatasana first. Hold. And then inhale up as you root the legs and feet down. Good. Very good. Shake out the hands. Kick out the legs. Just rest for a moment. Good. And then if your mat's really sticky like mine, you might need to step off it for a moment. And we're just going to alternate from this Utkatasana leg position. We're going to lift one leg up and down twice, and then the other leg up and down twice. So depending on how sticky your mat is, you can move off of it or not. Good. And then standing upright again, do a few kicks, heel to the butt. And then back to the front of the mat, if you have one for our second round, send salutations. A little bit different this time. Growing tall up through the crown of the head, equal weight into the feet again. And next inhalation, reaching up, grow tall. We're diving straight down this time, Uttanasana. Extend and release. Now when you bend the knees, we're doing left foot back this time. Left foot back to that low lunge. And then we're gonna come up for a moment and hold. Come back down briefly and see if you can bring the front heel 
and the back foot towards each other without movement. They're pressing down into the floor and towards each other. It's an isometric contraction when there's no movement, but you're using muscular effort, front heel, back foot towards each other, and you're gonna keep that squeeze and lift of the pelvic floor as you come back up, and then maybe that's too long of a stance for you to do a standing high lunge, because it hurts through the hips or something, in which case you could shorten your stance and bring the feet closer. So you can always widen for balance, heel still up if the foot doesn't mind, and straighten the back leg, opening those hip flexors. We're gonna do first, this just the left arm, so we're gonna stretch out that whole left side if you can balance. Good, and then both arms, crescent pose. You might inhale up a bit, and exhale down into the lunge deeper. You can even dance with that up and down. Good, one more. Come on down, back to your low lunge, and we're stepping back to our plank. Now, just like before, but we're gonna do left elbow, then right elbow, forearm plank. Lowering down, sphinx. Shoulders press down. Belly is gonna draw up, tailbone towards the heels, and back to our locust. And then we're gonna add on here. Come back to your sphinx and try bending the knees. How much do the knees feel comfortable bending? Maybe you just get that stretch in the front thighs. Enjoy that. And then if you want, you can try reaching one arm at a time to grab or both, which then is like your bow pose. And breathe. Trying to draw the knees in towards each other. And then back to when you're ready to rest, just do that stacked hands under the forehead again. <sighs> Big sigh. Good, this time is really about learning about being willing to slow down. Willing to slow down, willing to learn new things. Our excellent skills. Now, hands next to the ribs, we're pushing up to downward dog. Deep breaths. Lengthening and lifting the sitting bones up as you push down strongly through the palms. Now it's left foot stepping up to the front. As many steps as that takes. Get your foot up there, ankle under the knee, and then when you're in the low lunge here, you're gonna just squeeze and lift the pelvic floor. Just try hands to the knee. Now come back down and try that isometric contraction we did, meaning no movement. Your front heel and the back foot drawing towards each other. And you'll feel that in the legs and the pelvis, pulling them towards each other lifting the pelvic floor and then gently come up and see do you need to widen the feet for balance do i need to shorten the stance a little bit for this high lunge to be feasible stable balanced heel up and back still you can do the arms down low 
or swing them up. And inhale up, exhale down. Last one. Nice. Back down, low lunge. And we can step up to the front again. Extend. <sighs> Release. Does your lower back want you to roll up or hinge up? You could roll up with bent knees. The more traditional way is to come up like a hinge with squeezing of the shoulder blades even, squeezing of the front thighs, lengthen up, ah, excellent, rest again, shake it out, those are two really basic sun salutations, not much to them, but often you can insert tons of different standing poses in there as well. So let's go ahead and do a little bit more balancing before we come down to the floor again. So from here, I'm going to remove my mat because it's too sticky. And what we're going to do is just do these silly straight leg kicks using the outer hip muscles and holding them up for a second. One, one thousand. If they're not used to working, you might feel this right away. Good. One more or till you feel even. And one more on this side. Yeah. And then just rooting into the feet equally again. Tadasana. Now we're going to lift the right knee up and we're going to play with balance here. Once you lift the right knee up, you're going to bring it through center and you can soften the standing leg again like you're on a surfboard or a boat and then maybe straighten as it goes back. So what you're doing is the legs going forward and back and you're trying to catch your balance in the center with a little bend. And then at some point that standing leg might get tired. You can shake it out. You can wiggle the toes or curl the toes under on the floor and press, giving an opening to the front foot. I mean, top of the foot, that is. And then the other side. Shift into the left leg. Hips stay in midline, not off to one side, right in the middle. And, oh, sorry. We just did that side. I was focused on that foot. Right leg is standing. Left knee comes up. You can just hold if that's tough. If that's challenging, you might just be doing this kind of thing. Or you can go through center and back. Through center and front. Slowly back and forth. when you're done. Again, you can kick that leg out that was working, shake it out, or curl the toes under for that little smush. Awesome. Awesome. So just for a moment, roll through each foot a few times, front to back, front to back, rolling through the feet. Awesome. And then as you come back down, um, you don't need any props as you come back down and you're going to give your upper back a little massage. 
So when as you lay down, what you'll do is reach up, lift the hips so the weight goes into your upper back or middle back, and then you're just moving around to get compression in different parts of your upper back. And that compression invites softening of the muscles, which gives you more blood flow possible and less pain. So this is just a self massage using the floor. The buttocks might get tired eventually because they're holding up there. Ah, and then rest, maybe a little reach for a little crunch. Ah. <sighs> Soften. Now, take one foot, cross that ankle on the other thigh, and flex so toes are drawing towards the shin, and you'll bring your legs in for a little hip opener this way. This could be still or a slight side to side rocking. You could also give a little push on that inner thigh away from you. It might feel good opening through the groin there. And then knee towards the armpit. Draw that knee down. Half happy baby. And maybe straighten out the right leg. So you in opposition. Good. Last thing on this same side, crossed all the way over. Drop the knees down. Upper back tries to stay on the floor where it was. A little twist. Hmm. Good. Now we'll do those three on the other side. Toes flexed towards the shin and bring those legs in. Deep breath, enjoy that hip stretch. And then that push away on the inner thigh. Knee towards the armpit as you pull that knee down next to the armpit there. And then optional if you want to straighten out the other leg to the floor. Very good. Cross it over and one last twist. Ah. And breathe. From there, you can do anything else that might feel good, and then I'd like you to get into a comfortable resting position. In traditional um, yoga, it's a pretty much flat on the floor, palms up, shoulder blades towards the hips to flatten the upper back. And I also welcome you to use a blanket under the head, under the knees, or even maybe bending the knees like so, they can rest together if that feels better. Just see what feels best for your body. How would you like to rest for the last few minutes? Make yourself comfortable. We are all trying to trust the weight, embrace the uncertainty, enjoy the beauty of becoming, that willingness I talked about, willing to be in the present moment and slow down, 
willing to rally and help people when needed, willing to learn new things, especially like technology here. And when nothing is certain, anything is possible. And so all of us are trying to keep this feeling of patience, calm, safety, and stability. We will be well. We have the courage and strength to create ongoing stability and security in our lives. Resting. Lightly close the eyes. How much can you soften the face? Breathing in love and strength and calm for yourself and maybe someone else that might need it. Breathing out unnecessary worry and tension. Softening into this present moment. If you are on your back still, you're welcome to stay there, of course, as long as you want, since you are, I'm sure, somewhere comfortable or at home, would be my guess. Um, or you can roll onto your side now for the quote from Mother Teresa that I really love. May today there be peace within. May you trust that you are exactly where you are meant to be. May you not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith in yourself and others. May you use the gifts you have received and pass on the love that has been given to you. May you be content with yourself just the way you are. Let this knowledge settle into your bones and allow your soul the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. It is there for each and every one of us. Mother Teresa. Another deep breath. Send yourself some love. Use full exhalations throughout the day to keep your nervous system calmed and any positivity that you can find throughout the day, whether that's um, through movement like this, feeling the sunshine on your face perhaps, fresh air, uh, positive affirmations or certain books that you like to read. Um, there's actually a book I just started reading that someone gave me when I graduated from massage school 25 years ago called Hands of Light, and it's been amazing to actually have the time to read it. So may you find some things like that that you've been wanting to do but haven't been able to. And my love and hugs to all of you. Thanks. Namaste. Have a good day.